Hi, my name is Bishwas Dayal. I'm a neurologist specialising in Parkinson's disease and movement disorders. I did my initial training in New Zealand and then in 2016 I headed to the UK for a fellowship at the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery. While I was there, I completed a PhD in the field of deep brain stimulation at University College London. I was fortunate to have worked with pioneers in the field like Professor Patricia Limousin who was on the team in Grenoble in France that developed this procedure for Parkinson's disease. Deep brain stimulation is a surgical treatment for Parkinson's disease and it involves placing electrodes deep in certain structures in the brain that control movement. It works by using electrical stimulation to disrupt abnormal activity in the brain to treat symptoms of Parkinson's like tremor, stiffness and slowness. I will be referring to deep brain stimulation as DBS from now on. So when I was in the UK, we had a thousand people who were under the care of my team. In New Zealand, we've done 200 cases so far. So when someone is diagnosed with Parkinson's, we normally use medications as the first line of treatment. And the mainstay of treatment in terms of oral medications is levodopa. Now levodopa gets converted to dopamine in the brain, and that is the chemical that is lacking in Parkinson's. And there are other medications we use along with that to supplement the effect of levodopa. And these might prolong the effect of levodopa, um, give it a boost, or help suppress side effects like dyskinesias. So levodopa works really well, but the problem with it over time is that it doesn't last as long. And so people get symptoms of wearing off, um, where the Parkinsonian symptoms like tremor, stiffness, and slowness recur before the next dose kicks in. And this happens because the neurons that produce and store dopamine in the brain reduce in number over time. And so the buffering and storage capacity uh, of the brain with respect to levodopa goes down. And so there are more fluctuations in the bloodstream um, when people take medications. The other uh, complication from levodopa treatment um, is dyskinesias. And that happens because the brain compensates for the lack of levodopa by becoming more sensitive. And that means when you supplement it with medications, you get extra movements, which we call dyskinesias. With dyskinesias, um, this can make people very uncomfortable um, having extra movements for long periods in the day. And off symptoms, which is recurrence of Parkinsonian symptoms like stiffness, slowness, tremor, and freezing of gait, um, can be quite disabling. So when people get motor fluctuations, that is on and off symptoms and dyskinesias, um, this is where DBS can be helpful in evening out these fluctuations. With medications, um, there are fluctuations in the levels in your bloodstream and in the brain uh, because of various factors to do with absorption. Whereas with DBS, it's a constant electrical stimulation of the part of the brain that relieves Parkinsonian symptoms. DBS does not work any better than the best effect of levodopa, but because it's a constant treatment, it's like having the best effect of levodopa all the time. So factors that make people not so suitable for DBS are things like poor balance, and particularly poor balance in the on medication state, um, poor cognition, and that is problems with memory and thinking, and if they have other significant um, cardiac or you know, heart or lung issues, for example. Now I'll show you the device, and then I'll describe the procedure. So this is the, the wire, or the electrode, that goes into the brain. It's implanted in a deep structure in the basal ganglia, which is the region of the brain that controls movement. And for Parkinson's, uh, it's implanted in a tiny little nucleus, less than a centimeter long, called the subthalamic nucleus. And that's about just in here. Once the electrode is placed, um, the cable is tunneled under the skin and there's a pacemaker-like device which contains the battery and chip which is implanted into the chest. So the whole system is internalised once it's implanted. After the procedure we can connect with a tablet computer with specialised software and we can program the level of stimulation. There are various parameters that we can change. So you can see this blob of stimulation in blue. It can shift it up and down at different levels um, on the electrode. Um, we can direct the stimulation horizontally in different directions. Um, we can change how strong the stimulation is. 
uh, we can change the frequency of the pulses of stimulation and we can change the pulse duration to be shorter or longer. So there's hundreds and thousands of combinations and permutations um, that we can change to tailor it to the patient. So once you're selected to have DBS, you're admitted to hospital a day before the operation. And you would have had an MRI prior to that. Um, now we use that in specialized software for planning the trajectory of the electrode. So on the morning of the surgery, you have this frame placed around your head. We call this a stereotactic frame. And this allows us to measure things to millimeter precision. Um, and then you have a CT scan along with the frame so we can merge it with the MRI and plan the trajectory. On the day of the surgery, we withhold um, your medications. This is important because we want to see the Parkinsonian signs uh, present at the time so that we can do test stimulation and see a resolution of these signs. We can also test for side effects uh, with the test stimulation. And if side effects are severe or not acceptable, we can actually move the electrode so that we can optimize its placement. In theater, there are multiple teams um, looking after the patient and helping with the procedure. We have the surgical team, the, the consultant surgeon, and usually a registrar. Um, we have a DBS neurologist. Um, we have a DBS nurse who is there to help the patient um, with things to keep them comfortable. And we have the anesthetic team and then we have other theatre staff. Part of this procedure is performed while you're awake and that's when um, the electrode is placed into the brain. Now this involves drilling um, two holes at the front of the skull to place an electrode on either side. Now the scalp is anaesthetised um, so you won't feel pain but you will feel a vibration that can be uncomfortable. But this only lasts for about 30 seconds on each side. Now it's important to have you awake for this part of the procedure so that we can map out side effects and make sure that the stimulation is working at its optimum. The second stage of the surgery is placement of the pacemaker-like device, uh, the battery and chip in the chest. And this is done under general anesthesia and then the wires are connected to the electrode in the brain. We allow half a day for the first stage of the procedure, which is placing the electrode, but a lot of it is um, to do with planning. So we spend a lot of time planning because that's the most important part, um, to make sure that we reach that little nucleus deep in the brain. The actual procedure um, on each side would be 20 minutes or so. And then placement of the battery is done under general anesthesia, and that would be done within an hour. So most people, after surgery uh, would stay in hospital for a day or two and then they can go home. Um, we usually wait for two weeks to switch on the stimulation and that's to allow the, any swelling around the electrode to settle down so we can get a true effect from turning on the stimulation. The process from then on is that we ramp up the stimulation gradually and then we reduce the medications over the subsequent weeks and most people would end up on about half the dose of medications that they had before having DBS. And we find that the combination of stimulation and medications um, has a better effect than either treatment alone. So the reason the surgery is done awake um, is that it allows us to map out the effect of stimulation um, during the operation um, and actually test that during the procedure and make changes if we need to. And it also allows us to test for side effects and avoid those in the longer term. So following the surgery, um, you will have multiple appointments um, at the hospital with our DBS nurses. And they will start off the stimulation and gradually turn it up over the next few weeks while we reduce the medications. Um, and then at about three months, you will see a DBS neurologist. And subsequently, you'll have follow-up appointments every six to 12 months. This is important so that we can um, oversee your treatment, make adjustments to the stimulation, deal with any side effects. Um, make adjustments to your medication. There'll be quite a few of those adjustments in the first few weeks to months and even sometimes later on. DBS never stops working and it works really well for the motor symptoms of Parkinson's, that is tremor, stiffness and slowness. The problem with DBS is it doesn't stop the progression of Parkinson's and so we find other symptoms like balance and cognition can continue to progress. So just like with any procedure, there are risks with having DBS. These can be broken down into surgical risks and stimulation related side effects. The surgical risks um, are mostly to do with the procedure itself, 
um, and the hardware. Now the most serious complication is a stroke. Um, this can happen when, when the electrode is being advanced and hits a blood vessel on the way. The chance of this happening is small, less than 1%. The other main complication, a more common one, is an infection in the hardware. And if this is serious, then the hardware may need to be removed completely and replaced at a later date. The chance of this is about 3 to 5%. Then there are stimulation related side effects. So any therapy that has a therapeutic effect will have side effects as well. DBS is meant to treat motor symptoms of Parkinson's. When the current spreads beyond the areas we, where we want it to spread to, it can cause side effects. Common ones are uh, things like speech disturbance, so slurring of speech, and impairment of balance. And so if someone has poor balance, they may not be a good candidate for DBS. Another um, side effect is weight gain, and this might happen because the extra movements people have before surgery, tremor and dyskinesias, often settle down. And it can also increase appetite, and this results in weight gain. And now I'd like to introduce you to someone who's had this procedure. Hi Stephen. How are you? Good. Now remind me when you had um, your DBS done? 15th of March 2023. Right. And uh, could you tell us about um, what sort of symptoms you were struggling with before you had DBS? Well, I had an uh, apomorphine pump, mm -hmm. which has caused me no end of grief. And generally, uh, not my Parkinson's wasn't under control. Right. So when you say it wasn't under control, do you mean on-off fluctuations, dyskinesias? What was happening there? It was on-off fluctuations yes. more than anything else. And what difference did um, DBS make for you? It's made a life-changing effect. Great. Okay. And so the fluctuations have settled down now? Mainly. Mm -hmm. okay. Still need a little bit of adjustment here and there. Yes, sure. Okay. Stephen, would you mind if I turn off the stimulation for a minute or so? No, as long as you turn it back on again. So that's off now. And yes, if you hold your arms right up in front of you. Okay, and I'll turn the back on now. Can you feel that coming on? Yep, slowly coming on. Here we are. Great, and just put your arms out in front of you again. It's quite a remarkable effect on your tremor. Yep, yes. definitely. I was privileged enough to have this procedure, therefore I feel I have a duty to be able to show people the effect and encourage others who it would be beneficial to, to have it. For most people with Parkinson's, with motor fluctuations and complications of levodopa treatment who are suitable for this procedure, they've found this life-changing.